Today we're talking about chapter 18, section 2, Living Things Need Energy. Today's essential question, how does energy flow throughout an ecosystem? The energy connection. Organisms can be divided into three groups based on how they get their energy. We have producers, consumers, and decomposers. Producers are organisms that use sunlight to make food. They include plants, algae, and some bacteria. They're also called autotrophs. Think about the prefix auto. When we use it automatic, it means that something is done on its own. With producers being called autotrophs, this is something similar. It means they are making their own food. They do so in a process called photosynthesis. We will talk more about photosynthesis as we get into our cell unit later. Consumers are organisms that eat other organisms to get energy. They're also called heterotrophs. There are several kinds. We have herbivores, which eat plants, like this baby goat here. They are also called primary consumers. We have carnivores that eat animals, such as this lion. We have omnivores, such as a human being, that eat both plants and animals. And we have scavengers. Scavengers eat dead plants and animals. All right, please notice a focus. An omnivore will hunt and kill live plants and animals for food. A scavenger will hunt for things that are already dead for its food. They cannot kill organisms on their own. They do not have the adaptations they need for to do so. Decomposers are organisms that get energy by breaking down dead organisms. They are also heterotrophs. We often call them nature's recyclers. This is because as they are, look at this pile of leaves, they'll be sitting there breaking down the dead pile of leaves. They'll uh, absorb the nutrients and elements of compounds they need, and they'll put the other ones back into the ground, making the, the ground more fertile. So nature's recyclers are decomposers. They include bacteria and different fungi. Here we have another picture of some fungus growing on a tree. A food chain. A food chain is a diagram that shows how energy and food flows from one organism to another. Here we have the energy from the sunlight going to the plants, the grass. Again, this is done in the process of photosynthesis. The energy from the grass goes to the rabbit as the rabbit eats the grass. The energy from the rabbit will go to the cat as the cat eats the rabbit. This is a food chain. A food web is similar, so for it's a little more complex. A food web shows the feeding relationships between organisms in the ecosystem. In other words, it's all the food chains in the ecosystem put together. Energy flows in only one direction, which is symbolized by the arrows. So the arrows point to the organism that is getting energy. Energy is not immediately used is stored in tissues. Well, the energy stored in tissues can be used by the next consumer. So only the, the energy stored by the plant here can get used and sent to the rabbit. Only the energy stored in the rabbit and fat and other cells goes to the owl. So on and so forth. There are two types of food webs. We have aquatic food webs, which is water, and we have land food webs. Now these two food webs can overlap. For example, a bear will eat berries and squirrels and other small rodents, but it will also eat fish, which are in the aquatic food web. So it just shows how the food webs can overlap. An energy pyramid. 
An energy pyramid is a diagram that shows the amount of available energy through the food chain. The main focus here is that it shows the amount of available energy. There are more energy and organisms available at the bottom, so our producers are always at the bottom. There's a greater number of them and a greater amount of energy available. And it decreases as you move up the pyramid. So the amount of energy decreases as you move up. The amount or the number of organisms also decreases as you move up the pyramid. Only 10% of the energy is available at each level you move up the pyramid. 90% of the energy is used to carry out life processes such as developing and growing and reproducing. 10% of that energy, of the energy available, is saved and stored and available to the next level. So only 10% of the energy in our grass level, producer level here, it's available for our primary consumers or our grasshoppers. So if you see here, it shows that there are a thousand kilocalories available at the producer level. As you move up again, you only have 10% of the energy available for the next level. An easy way to figure out how much available availability is then is to just move the decimal over one location. So that makes 100 kilocalories available for the next level. Again, only 10% is available. So we, the grasshoppers, we have 100 kilocalories. Only 10% of those kilocalories are available for the next level up, which makes it 10 kilocalories. Let's review. So remember our food chain from earlier? Place the arrows in the correct location and direction. Once you place the arrows, your food chain should have looked like this. Remember, our grass gets its energy during photosynthesis from the sun. Our rabbits get their energy by eating the grass, and our cat gets their energy by eating the rabbits. Remember, the arrows always point to the organism that is receiving energy. All right, create an energy pyramid, including the demonstration of energy loss. So what goes in each level of this pyramid? The bottom level, remember, should always have your producer. In this case, it is grass. Then come our primary consumers, our herbivores, which in this case is the rabbit. And our secondary consumers at the top of our pyramid, in this case, it is our cat. If we did have a tertiary consumer or something in the cat, it would be added at the top here, like a wolf. Now I also want you to look at, the, at energy loss. So if we have 20,000 kilocalories available at, this, at the producer level, then only 10% is available for the rabbits. We're gonna move our decimal spot over one location leaving 2,000 kilocalories available. All right, 10% of the energy at the rabbit's level is available for the cat. So again, move the decimal spot over one, leaving 200 kilocalories. And if we did have a wolf in this food chain, again, we would have 10% moving over, and you would have 20 kilocalories available for the wolf. That's today's lesson. Have a nice day.